All right, boys, we are playing Young Kiv here. Now, Young Kiv, one of the best man players in the world. You guys all probably know this. If you don't, uh, he just made the live event last tournament. Uh, a run in this tournament for him would secure a Madden Bowl spot, more likely than not, later on. This is winners, uh, round two of winners. The fact that me and him matched up early is just pretty unfortunate for both of us. Uh, he had just beaten Prom right to get to this game, so he's already had kind of a tough matchup going into it. We start the ball on offense. You guys know I'm in the U-Trips formation. I like U-Trips a good amount. Um, I think I, I, it's one of the more, it's one of my favorite formations I think I've ran here in a second. And you see he's in this nickel over defense where they are looking to really send a lot of pressure right here with these guys all coming. Uh, and then he's using this safety right here who, what, who started out up here, bring him down to the box. They can go max coverage from this look, or they can send pressure from this look, uh, running man coverage across the board as well. Um, so it's just something I have to deal with throughout this game. And you see immediately he does send pressure. We actually have kind of bad pocket presence. I got a little scared of his pressure. I just wasn't sure how his pressure would come in. I'm not... This year, pressure's so weird. It's been giving me issues with my pocket. And I've, I've been doing a bad job. I should step up here. Instead, I keep walking back. And the result of this is an inaccurate throw to this open slant. But you see both his under pressures also activate as well. So, just incompletion, unfortunate, but I need to have a little bit better pocket presence right there. But I'm happy, I'm like, okay, I can get routes open. It's always good to see, especially against a player like Kiv, who he, he, uh, some tournaments he'll have a brand new defense that becomes the new meta. Um, he's one of the people who, you know, really sets the meta. He'll have something glitchy, he'll have something really good. To see a route of mine get open early is just nice to see, right? It's just always nice to see your routes get open early. Able to hit a quick flat, um, a gain of three. I actually would have liked that a little bit more had I done that on first down. Uh, on second and 10, it just cuts it to a third and seven, which is cool. I know that flat from U Trips, though, isn't great. Now, here we do something where we're audibling to Trips tight end. Um, and we're audibling a lot to the play PA slot corner. This corner route is really good at BD Man coverage. And then we're going to do a motion slant right here from Carmichael. Motion slants are so nasty at BD Man coverage. Uh, he sends pressure. You see, we actually pick it up across the board. Again, I'm kind of drifting back. I can afford to here, but it's not great by me. I need to do a better job. And we're able to get this corner out open. Again, seeing that get open, which was, in my opinion, was a little bit of a predictable play call from me. But I feel like his defense is predictable. Um, so seeing that he's not able to, you know, have some sort of shading uh, that kind of takes that corner out away in man coverage or something. is just, you know, it, it boosts your confidence knowing that you're able to get routes open. It, it, it really, really is. Um, at this point, I'm like, okay, my, his pressure is not coming in crazy good. Uh, I, feel, I feel okay. I feel pretty good. Let's see, he sends another blitz, and as I actually thought that, this is actually kind of funny. You see, I have a little bit better pocket right here. Um, we send a little four-out route combo. A little bit better pocket. I'm not, you know, I, I'm standing here. That's what you're supposed to do, you know, stand, stay strong in the pocket. And, of course, the first play I do that, this guy comes screaming. And it's like, well, okay, that's freaking awesome. Um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's annoying. That's annoying. And that's the type of pressure that'll come in sometimes that results in you having bad pocket because you don't know if that's gonna happen always uh so it, it's just a frustrating part of the game going to the play curl flat out of u trips uh we're gonna do a little motion slant for those of you who don't know gun y off trips is u trips uh we had a this little bump right here that happened it makes a a little weird i could probably throw it still but we don't you see his users back here he's helping to take away this streak um along with he's gonna go to this post so i know we have b right here and we're able to hit b and get pretty good yardage. Gonna make it a third and one. So I'm like, okay. Every single play though, something that I am keeping in my mind is every single play call I've had so far, I have routes open, right? It's not even like I'm relying on ags here. I am just getting routes open. So it's just on me to to uh, avoid his pressure, have good pocket, and just make the correct read. Um, and so it's, it's just good. It's good to acknowledge whether or not, hey, am I getting fucking routes open or not? Because uh, sometimes you'll run a game where you're not. Third and one right here. Uh, I like this play call a ton. I believe I'm going to this quick flat right here. You see, if we go with a quick flat right here, there's not many... You know, this guy's not going to come... This slot corner probably won't come down to the tight end. It's just It'd be a weird adjustment. This D end isn't going to get here. So really, it's I know it's the safety who's on the tight end. And realistically, that safety just won't get there in time. At least in terms of being able to get a yard or two, which is all I needed right there. Great play call. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy that went through my head. Uh, you see, we go on conservative here. I bounce between conservative and balanced a good amount in these tournament games. I do find a lot of value in this game in juking, in 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 trucking, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, but I'm always worried about fumbles. You see, he's staying in the same front, right? Where he's able to send mad pressure, or 
he's able to uh, zone everybody out, which he only sends four right here. And this is probably, I, I think, the only person I've seen really throw this ball consistently. And this is a super good ball. It's something that if you're going to take something away from this video, here you go. Here's a great one. You see, we have Harold Carmichael right here, but any big receiver will do. Carmichael's just the best because he's 6'7", six, 6'8". Six, and you're able to see we have a step to the outside. So we're able to freeform this. Look where this freeform is. All the way up here. All the way up there. We get a high throw, good accuracy touch pass. And we're just racking it, right? I could probably push that a little bit further. Now, not getting into the end zone there is very frustrating. We have to get four yards. We have first and goal. Um, and we're really just going to end up... Um, I just try running the ball. Passing the ball in the red zone is really hard in this game. And we end up just running the ball a couple of times here. Let's go first and goal. Audible trips. Go with the quick base. Not able to punch it in. We're going to just skip ahead 30 seconds. See a third and goal right here. Um, and we get to a fourth and goal. What happened right here? Third and goal. Uh, we end up going for just a quick high ball to Carmichael, uh, I believe. Again, getting routes open in the red zone is really hard. And a one-on-one, -on -one, this isn't the worst opportunity ever. It just gets knocked out is what it is fourth and goal uh it sucks because we're playing such a good offensive player where right now okay we have a chance to get seven um which means worst case scenario he also gets seven it's tied end up taking three um i wasn't confident in my red zone at all so it was like i wasn't i just have to take three uh and so we are on defense now now uh the, there was a patch like two days before this and what I ran on defense was a hybrid of nickel over and nickel double A gap. I'm in the commander's playbook in this. And we're running a lot of man coverage across the board uh, with a little bit of zone mixed in. All right. So he's going to get manned up again. And you see him audibly. He audibles a lot, which is a little bit uncanny for him. But immediately, I'm pretty happy to see that this audible to, to tight slots. This is tight slots right here. Um, we end up doing a good job of getting pressure in on it. You see pressure right here off the edge. Nothing really open. Um... And it's like, okay, here we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm feeling good about that. That's always, It's always a good thing to see, again. Um, you're, it, it's cool to see your routes get open early, obviously. Uh, just to know, it's like a confidence thing I've always had. Is like, okay, can I get my routes open this game? And it's like, I don't know, once you, I always feel like it. Once you see like, okay, I'm getting routes open, like, you're good. Like, you can do this. He takes advantage of a quick throw wheel. I thought he was going to try to stop and go me. He doesn't, so I take myself out of out of position this is a really good thing in bunch you can do out of a lot of formations this quick throw see this is man coverage right here but with set feet lead you can make this throw you see my man coverage corner way out here not able to get there and so i thought he was gonna try stop and go me right here i thought he was gonna boom boop, and then you guys have seen that stop and go plenty of times so you see me i do a little hesitation and that cost me i get too far behind and he ends up scoring a touchdown not a good way to start against a player like young kid where it's like ah I can't really afford to give him an easy touch. At least make him work. That's what my goal is. First to 10, audible to trips tight end. Go with a little quick base there. Really, I just like getting to a hash mark. Whenever I start in the middle, uh, at a middle hash, I'm usually calling some play that I'm confident will at the very least get me to a hash mark. It's why I'm a big um, advocate for returning kickoffs, actually. Uh, but in this game right now, it's hard. It's You'll get some kick returns, but then you'll also get hit at your own like 15. And it's like, well, that's a big sacrifice. So this row come we run here, tight end out route is going to do a good job against man a lot right here. He actually does get bagged. Motion slant is going to do a good job against man coverage as well. And this post does. Now, what's hilarious is I say all those things. And in this situation, nothing got open, which is just sometimes how, how man coverage works. And you have to, you have to not force something here, right? Second to six, you see, instead I start to scramble outside and we get this playmaker up. He bounced. So the out route bounced from here. Playmakers up. Or he bounces here. Now we're trying to playmaker him up, right, in an ideal world. Now, he doesn't playmaker as well as I would have liked. We go with the high ball. I should have probably lobbed it, actually, and just barely able to get it out of his reach. You see me? I actually spammed wide right there. I got freaking scared. A very risky throw. I thought the playmaker would be a little bit sharper um, is why I thought that. I See, right here is when you can see him kind of light up. Um, this is when I playmaker him. So I'm thinking, okay, straight up field, we're good. Instead, he still goes a little diagonal. Um, you can see my pass lead all the way up to the outside. Just not able. Derwin James, 6'2". Casper, 6'4". He's under it. It's a close throw. It's a scary. I, I'm very scared about that throw. But able to able to do okay with it, right? Um, thank goodness. Six for nine. Nice. 37 yards passing. That looked like that said. Um, and we're, we're, we're getting routes open consistently, though. I'm, I'm feeling good. Even right there where every route got bagged, we're able to make something happen. At the very least, it would have just been a throwaway, right? Um, he's not doing anything where we're like, ah, oh, 
you know, we're screwed. Right here, go and watch this backside streak. I know he's running man-to-man -man press coverage on this backside a lot. So we're going to be looking for this thing again. You see, uh, you can see I'm already throwing this ball. I'm throwing this ball because I see this guy's rotating into a middle third, right? Even if he was rotating into a half, he's just so far inside right now where he just can't make this play. And then here, you can actually see this marker right here where that's where my pass is going and we're just able to get separation and again just a perfect like that's probably as ideal of a free form as you could possibly get and again we're just taking advantage of Carmichael this isn't an ag glitch that's just a good ball that's that's a ball that like um uh, would be absolutely beautiful to see in the NFL uh just a bread basket type throw audibly to trips tight end again right here we're going uh verticals which I actually don't love this play call as much um I think I actually kind of mess this play call up let's see we have a motion slip. Yeah, I, I messed this play call up quite a bit. Um, do I motion him across? What do I do here? I'm not sure. I like verticals because this tight end corner route can beat man. It's just, I don't do a great job. I think I max pro. I think he's sending, yeah. So I think he's sending pressure. I max pro. He sends four, four or five. Nothing really open. Uh, just throw the ball away. I was hoping to get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Carmichael. Um, so here I was actually looking to possibly ag with Carmichael on this streak on this outside. Um, but you see it's double coverage. Here I actually would have... See, I actually have a possible throw right here. But this safety makes it double coverage scary. No reason to force it. I actually don't hate that play uh, That play call now that I look back at it. I, I, I see what I was thinking. 126 yards passing. Okay, that's what we actually have. Um, but uh, still, moving the ball pretty fine on offense. I just can't really afford to kick three again. You know, I can't afford to make two red zone trips and only get six points total out of it. That's a... It's not a good that's not a good deal we're going with the play called scat right here um i love this play this corner route from crabtree is really good and we're gonna do a little motion slant from megatron or actually we're gonna go motion streak okay i like this call so we have out route can beat man coverage right tight end out route casper crabtree can beat man coverage on this corner route. this is a really good corner from scat and then we have carmichael on the streak that's been cooking one-on-one -on -one. and then megatron's gonna get snapped right here what this does is gets a one-on-one -on -one, and we're gonna be able to open up this ag glitch uh right here boom able to catch it in front of them again uh i don't love i'm not gonna seriously say i love uh having to do the ag glitch but in that situation it's a really good play call especially for this part of the field where it's hard to get posts and slants and stuff eh, it can be hard to get stuff open down here right here boom again carmichael that's what we tried to go with on that previous possession if you guys remember that third and goal call we just go with it right here taking advantage of carmichael being six eight um one-on-one -on -one coverage you just can't really you just can't give this positioning open in this game because you're just going to get ag caught again I, there's just not much you, there's not much kiv can do right there in one-on-one -on -one coverage um let's skip ahead right here kiv on offense you seem audibly to tight a lot that's something that a lot of the pros are doing they're running bunch and audibly to different formations a lot of times it's going to be tight we're in double a gap setting pressure off the edge gets picked up and he actually because he had something he could have maybe thrown. He just doesn't want to risk it, and he throws the ball away. He is one for three for 74. Remember, he got that huge touchdown off the verticals call early. Um, and so we are going to switch up our defense a little bit now that I ran it a few plays kind of in a row on him. Uh, let's see. We're going double mug. We're going mid blitz again. But we're going to audible right here into nickel over, and we're going to run cover two. Now, watch what I do in my cover two right here. We have a 25-yard flat, and we have a five-yard flat. Same thing on this side. 25, 5. Gun tight is known for attacking these corner routes. This is tight slots, but it's the same idea. Every compressed formation is known for attacking with deep corner routes, attacking the sidelines. They struggle attacking the middle of the field. So I say, okay, I'm going to take away the sidelines. Now, he counters that with a flat route that you're just able to snap throw. That's verticals out of tight slots. Uh, halfback, gun, halfback, tight slots weak. Um, I believe he's in the, is he in the Steelers playbook. I believe so. Steelers or maybe Indy. I can't remember exactly. He's motion. See, this is where things get interesting. He motions that halfback out. So we just made him up. User, interior, a linebacker. And my user is just a step behind. This is actually really frustrating. This is the type of thing where you're playing someone like Young Kid. Your user can't make a little mistake like this. Um, this is meant to kind of put a bunch of islands out there. One-on-one, 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 one-on-one. -on -one, one -on -one. And my users manned up with the tight end. Um, along with this guy. And my user just gets... Oh, just gets beat by a hair. I can't allow that to happen. Got, got to be, especially on third and four. I just have to be better on it. Um, it's a mistake that, like, it's, I'd rather, 
it's okay when that stuff happens for the fact that you yourself can kind of say, okay, I need to be better. Um, but some you can't really afford to happen. Again, going with the double Mabel, uh, curl flat cloud, curl flat cloud, bla backing these clouds off to make sure they play deep. And then we have two deep halves. Um, I have the middle of the field. And we're really just trying to throw him for a little bit of a loop, a little bit of a, a change up so he's not super comfortable. And it works right here where you can actually see it working to perfection on this left side where he's going to run a C route and a flat route right here. Now, this flat route could be thrown like right here technically, right? Like good. It's just a tougher throw. Um, same with the C route could get fit in on the sideline here. These are just, you know, these are just really hard throws and they get a little risky. Uh, and then the middle of the field has this post route. I'm using it. He could have maybe tried forcing the streak, but would have need to be a really good throw. And he ends up getting sacked. Good pocket by him to, to contain the sack to just a one-yard loss. Good job by D-Ware for getting in there, though. And that's kind of what I... A big thing of what I want to do here is to give him a few different looks and make make his mind slow down. He's an offensive player. He's so good. And he's been running bunch in these type sets for so long where his mind works so fast. And he's so used to seeing these, you know, these man coverage types of sets. Where if you could just make, you know, throw him for a little bit of a curveball, audible into a double Mabel, for example, you're able to kind of make him think a little bit more. And if he's just a little bit slower to react, he's going to miss some of those tight windows like you saw in the previous play that you could hit right there. Corner out, beating man coverage. Would have liked to see my man coverage play it, but whatever. Audible to tight doubles now, which again has this corner out that he just hit. He's motioning across. I'm not sure what he's doing here. Um... Oh, he's going to a quick base. Didn't love that call from him, but he's trying to chew this clock down. You can see we're hit, about to hit the two-minute warning. And, I mean, I'm feeling good. 10-7, uh, two-minute warning. Pre I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. We send pressure. We're coming free. Right here is another really good example. I audible to nickel over, which I'd ran that cover two from, but this time I'm sending the same pressure I would send from double A gap. Again, just trying to slow his thought process down a little bit um, to, where, to make him kind of... You just hesitate a little bit, you know, just kind of be like, oh, what is he doing? Um, make him think a little bit more. You can call that slowing him down or speeding him up. Um, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like, so he's not so automatic that he has to actually think a little bit more. Uh, quick out route, ends up getting it. We got good pressure right there. Under pressure, had an opportunity to activate, just didn't. Whatever, good read by him. I was a little bit upset that he got like 15 yards off the out route, but is what it is. And you're going to see us go with our uh, flats 25, curl flats to zero. Gun bunch offset. He's coming back out. And let's see if he audibles right here. We're going to audible over. We actually go. What, what did we just do? Did we call him out here? I think I just messed up. Yeah, we got cover two last second. Um, and he calls a run play that really doesn't get anything. Um, so it's second and 11 right here. This ends up being a huge play for us. We're audibling into cover two. Again, he snaps it as we audible. So again, I don't even know if he's recognizing that I'm audibling into Tampa two here. But this is a huge play for us. Absolutely massive. And if you've watched all my videos on this channel, you'll know that about two weeks ago, I played a guy named Gage, XLF Monkey, um, where I lost in the fourth quarter. It was a ladder game, and I lost on the same exact, basically the same exact throw. So he, we, we audible. He sees, oh, Tampa 2. He has this corner route right here in the seam. This is a corner route, but he's throwing it in the seam. This year, this throw is just ass, dude. It's so inconsistent. The same, I literally lost a game two weeks ago from this exact same throw. Does he get cheated? Absolutely. But, but, it's a throw. It's just ass this year. It's just not nearly as good. It's so inconsistent because your players dumb out on this throw so consistently. It sucks. Um, yeah, it just sucks. And that is one thing I will say, though, that I don't think he was as familiar with because he doesn't see much zone. So audibly into something that he wasn't as familiar with and throwing a ball that he's probably thrown less than 20 times this year. Not many people are leaving that, that area of the field open. So it, it, it ends up working out super well in our favor. Again, lucky, absolutely. But I lost a game against Gage on this channel two weeks ago, a week and a half, two weeks ago it's on this channel um, from the, the exact same mistake, thinking I could fit it in the corner, uh, like in that a corner out in that seam, and you just can't. So we're up ten. And you end up, dude. What? Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. This get off of me is insane. Cause we still. This is gonna be hard to score still. Bang! Get off me. Oh my gosh. Works out so well for us. We get so lucky. First to ten on his own thirty-three. Need to keep him from getting points though. Right. This game. Uh, he gets ball at half. So being down ten in this situation, not the worst thing ever. Obviously, it's ideal for us. 
Um, but not the worst thing ever for him. He's able to hit this quick flat, and then he gets screwed on this flat row. Again, another glitch in the game. If you guys have played this game, you guys know this, but this, this is just stupid. Um, so we have this guy manned up. Uh, it's just a... Uh, it's the wheel route. Could have gotten some really good yards right here. Probably would have gotten to the 50 or so. Absolutely screwed. That that, that sucks. Um, I, I, I do hate that. That's It's just dumb. It's just really dumb in the game. Second 10, we audible into cover three. And this is actually a mistake by me. These So I try to double Mabel this right side, but the quad flat doesn't get back in time. And he's able to hit a corner route. This is just a mistake by me. I should have just went to Tampa 2 and backed off the clouds. Flat zones do a terrible job of getting to the sidelines this year unless they're backed off. And it, it was just an L uh, an L try by me, honestly. It just uh, I, I, sh I shouldn't have went to cover three right there. It was just really dumb. Right here, though, uh, first to 10, 48 seconds. Clock is stopped. He has three timeouts all the time in the world. We do go with the cover two. This time, we have our clouds right here. We, I should back these guys off. Um, and we actually do get that back off last second. And he's going to end up hitting this over the middle of the field. Good tackle by our boys, which he's super chilling with. I end up having to... That's one of the better, like, attack in the middle of field plays um, from tight. And he does a good job calling it right there because that's what I'm leaving open. Just a good call by him uh, all around. I'm trying to see what ends up happening right here. He ends up... I knew he ends up scoring a touchdown, but how does, how does he score a touchdown? A defensive lapse by me. Tampa 2, again, trying to take away these sidelines from him. He ends up quick snapping me. My user a little bit out of position, and he's able to force feed the ball to Casper. Cuts it to a three-point game, but we have a little bit of time. 24 seconds, just a wee bit, or 21 seconds, a wee bit of time. Two timeouts. Going to be trying to, you, there's no real argument. Some people say, like, play conservative right here, just get to half. I, just don't turn the ball over, right? Just don't throw the ball directly to him, and you're fine. Uh, the chance of you, you know, I mean, like, you could get D-line picked or something, but it's kind of unlikely. Immediately, you see this back shoulder opportunity, and we're going to... Do we go to it? We do go to it. Yeah. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. He's running a lot of press man. That's what a lot of the pro players are doing right now is this press man where they're getting it hands, you know, hands, hands. Um, and it, we just have this back shoulder again. You see this free form all the way out there. I'm on near 20 out of 20 uh, placement accuracy. And, I mean, it's... I'm surprised he gave that up again. I think it's just a ball that not many people throw. I think, actually... I might be one of the only people who who's really consistently thrown that ball in competitive Madden, actually. Okay, I don't think a lot of people can do that free-forming, so maybe pat myself on the back. Um, but, geez, I just ripped my, my uh, headphones out of my ears. God, that actually just hurt. He ends up doing something weird right here where he's actually made up three deep. And I guess he just didn't want me to go for an ag attempt, which is fair, but I'm like, okay, I thought he would blitz me. If I'm him, I'm blitz. I'm sending six or seven right here to get me because I'm right on the cusp of field goal range at the 42. If he sacks me right here, if I go negative at all, I'm out of field goal range, or I'm right. I'm still right on the cusp of it, right? So going to a really soft defense here, I think is actually an L play call from him uh, because it just gives me a really easy underneath throw where I could go. I could have went A here, but also I see this running lane, so I'm like, okay, um, I'm just gonna go here, slide. Uh, I let and I I just let the clock run down, take my three. He's playing prevent defense, so I know I'm not gonna score a touchdown. But he really should have blitzed me right there. He really really should have. His ball, those three points, end of halves are so important. Um, end of the first half and obviously end of the second half. But end of the first half is really important. But uh, to winning games, you can't screw up the end of halves. You can't. You gotta capitalize on them, right? Getting three was such a big deal right here. You see, he actually runs a halfback streak. Uh, this is new into the game. These halfback streaks used to do this, where they kind of go like a little horizontal, then up. Now, after the most recent patch about a week ago, they go straight up the field. And he ends up running that right here, which is really good against the style of defense I'm running. Uh, you can see my user. I'm not expecting it, actually. Usually, this would be a curl route. If you guys are familiar, usually it'd be curl. He keeps on running, so it's just something I'm not used to yet. And he actually has a touchdown. Uh, but he gets a little impatient. D-Ware with a good shed, and he has to scramble up the middle. Uh, he actually could have fumbled right there, too. Second and eight, though. And I'm like, okay. Good to, good to freaking see. That was scary. Going just man coverage across the board right here. We're just not pressing. Uh, what does he do? He ends up hitting backside. Yeah, he ag glitches me with Brandon Marshall. Yeah. Um, if he wanted to do that more often, he probably could have. Um, he just didn't do it often, thankfully. Uh, there's not much I can do. It's just a straight, that was just a straight up ag glitch. We end up going to Tampa, too. Uh, right here, I'm a little bit worried that he's going to go back to the ag glitch. So just straight Tampa 2. 
uh, and he ends up getting, we, we get really good pressure right here. Uh, one of the nice things about this defense that you will sometimes uh, get this guy coming free right off this right edge. Um, and that's what we're able to do right here. You see him. Uh, and it just, whew, lucky to have that happen, but it does happen in this game. It's part of the defense. Um, it's a little unpredictable. The game's random. So we'll take it, obviously. Same look right here. Uh, going no blitz. Basically, again, I'm just trying to make him think, running a little bit of a little bit unpredictable defense. Uh, really just get him. I just want him thinking, dude. I just want him thinking. And you see right there, a good example of the Devil Mabel doing a pretty good job. And him doing a good job exploiting it by taking up off the middle. I'm setting no, I sent no pressure at all. And I only had three people uh, going right there. So good job by me. Good job by him. Third and two. Can't complain about that. Sometimes there's just, like, for every defense, there's some sort of counter. And, you know, there's always, there is always something open for the offense. Especially in this game. Like, there always is an opportunity um, for the offense to do something. Just props to him. Good job by him. We end up all going up into nickel over, and right here we end up setting the pressure from nickel over. Um, usually I would run cover two out of this. This time we go uh, pressure. Ends up going with a quick flat and a huge tackle right there. Uh, he ends up going hurry up fourth and inches. Big opportunity to get something, to get a stop. A stop here doesn't win the game, obviously, but a big, big, big chance. We're going straight press man covered across the board. He snaps it, and we are able to get pressure off this edge. And we get it under pressure, and that's just not crazy open. Would have been a tough ball. Um, it would have been, he might have agged me. Uh, I'm not 100% sure. But you see, this under pressure lights up right there. That's the under pressure. Um, and really nothing. This is a possible ball. Uh, overall, I'm having the defensive play call. There's not a ton you could do there. And we're able to take advantage and get a stop up six. Second and 10 now for us. We're going to the play curl flat. Have Should have actually snap thrown A. Uh, a is still open even right here. I should have I should have done a better job with this. End up missing the read, throwing it away. Kind of an L, L little thing by me right there. And third and 10, all the way into PA slot corner. Now, this is something I hadn't used yet. He he used this same halfback streak you guys saw, and he has been leaving this halfback in a lot of nobody covering him situations. So we're going to attack him vertically. You see his user bite down just a little bit too much, and now we have this halfback wide open up the field. Throw it. Ah, uh, so let's talk about what happened here. Um, couple of things. I really have never thrown this ball before, so I I get scared about the free form. You guys have all free form free form stuff where you free form it too far and you overthrow the dude, right? So here I'm like, okay, let me just regular throw this. Nothing too crazy. It's open right here, right? We're inside of him. Uh, I try to do a little swerve to kind of keep that defender away from me, um, and the defender literally. He just gets a great a great burst and a great animation. It's like, oh, I could have highballed that. There's a lot of things I could have done way better on that. I just didn't want to free form it. I got scared. And he got a little bit of a warp, but ah, oh, man. Something I really can't afford to let. I mean, that, that's that's just a blown opportunity. Um, is really what it is. It's just a huge, huge, huge just L moment by me where I have a chance to at the very least get into field goal range. And instead, I mean that probably is a touchdown, but field goal rage at the least and instead I get scared with the free form and I throw a pick which uh which sucks but still up six still in a good spot at the very least we'll have a money drive of sorts right so it's not over yet um going back into the cover two he's been having some issues with it now he's able to hit that pocket right there able to get a good gain my curl flats are at zero so I bet I oh he goes hurry up I would change my curl flats to five though to play up a little bit higher to defend against that in route on the sidelines a little bit more he picks up my pressure, gets a one-on-one, -on -one, throws it. Brandon Marshall caught it. He's at the one-yard line now. Second to goal. He's going to punch it in just with a little uh, just a little power O. Um, I've had really good success with this style of defense of just being able to shoot this power O, but sometimes just just gets it. That's hard to get a stop right there. First to 10 for us, though. Only down one. Going to run the ball really fast, get onto a hash, and actually <laughs> end up getting seven yards. Really only wanted a hash, and we're still not on a hash mark. But seven yards, you can never complain. Um, I think I end up going probably with the pass play here. I'd be surprised if I run the ball again. Let's see. End up going curl. What do I do? Curl flat? Do I go curl flat here? No, we go scat. Go out route, corner route, slant. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, a lot of man beating routes right here. A lot of man beating routes right here. And you see him now, this X receiver, right? A lot of times I insta throw this. He now has help right here, which I, I'm dictating what he has to do on defense, which is good. That's a very, very good thing. And I see, 
I've rolled out. I made a mistake of rolling out right here. Um, when RB is actually wide open, but I can't throw this anymore. Had I stayed in the pocket, I could have. And it's like, oh, I'm upset with myself. I'm still upset with myself. It was just bad pocket to, to kind of force force your hand and roll out like that. Um, it, limit, it limits the field sometimes. And right there is a good example of should have had a first down. And instead, I don't. Third and three. Um, I'm curious, what do we do right here? Do we go back to the same? I think I, I do I go back to the same play. It's not a bad idea. Motion slant, can I snap? Oh, we're gonna let him go all the way across this time. Don't hate this play call. This time, that corner route actually might have been kind of open. Uh, I could have maybe thrown it on the break, but I got scared. Fourth and three, didn't want to force it. Do I think I go, I honestly might just go back to the same exact play call again right here, boys. Just because, I, I mean, when, when, you come to, when it comes to man beating plays, I'm forcing his hand so much on the left side, uh, on the ISO side with that streak. And then on the right side, I feel like I'm gonna be able to have some open. So I'd be surprised if I don't just go right back to the same play. Um, just I think it's a really good play. And even right there on that th on, on both of those last two downs this play, I feel like I've had stuff open. Oh, we go... Okay, don't hate this. Motion slant, tight end corner. Don't hate this. Tight end corner gets open. Bang. Good ball. Good free for him. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he just has this... It's just a tough assignment. This guy right here is manned up onto the tight end. Um, I know that at this point. So we're going motion slant. He has to user this. Um, and then we have the corner out. Winning. Casper is short in. Casper is one of the best tight ends in the game. Uh, just a good play call. Uh, I was a little bit afraid when I threw that. because, uh, well, Or when I called that. Because I, I thought he might end up trying to put a flat over there. Um, because I have went to a corner out on that side multiple times. But he just doesn't. Right here, PA slot corner. Looking for this corner out. Um, motion slant or tight end in route. We have the motion slant. Again, L pocket by me. I need to have better pocket. I seriously do. Like, watch this, dude. Watch. I just kind of... I get, like, spooked. Because I, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm having such a bad pocket, honestly. Able to get it, but I, I really shouldn't be doing that. Um, I used to have really good pocket. Y you'll see flashes of it, too. It's just... I suck. What do you want me to say? I just suck for that. Going back. Uh, gonna run it. Gonna probably flip it right, right here. Unless we're going to trips tight end. Yeah. Flip it. Go on conservative ball carrier in a position to, at the very least, take the lead. Curl flat. You see this post route, motion slant, tight end flat. You see his double coverage right here. Nothing's open. I got I to gotta get rid of the ball, though. I can't take a big sack like that. Second and 20. Yeah. Even watch this game back. I see a lot of mistakes by myself, which is uh, unfortunate, obviously. A similar play call from before with this tight end corner, and then we have this curl flat post. Oh, we're actually going with the slant again. Yeah, motion snap the slant. Uh, it's a good play. It really is a good play. Back shoulder. This is a... Uh, yeah, so this is cool recognition by me. Um, watch what happens to his user. His user ends up getting clicked on to uh, Julius Peppers. He's a D-tackle. We get the same one-on-one -on -one animation, so I know I can throw his back shoulder. It's it's a D-tackle. Um, he just won't animate on anything in this game. You just won't. Um, and you probably shouldn't because it's a D-tackle. Um... So, yeah, we're just able to get that. Uh, definitely a huge break by me, able to get that one-on-one -on -one and get him onto a D-tackle. Just a kind of a blunder. We did have the motion slant, though, uh, which would have been thrown if it wasn't for that, I guess. But still, definitely a huge break, able to get back after a huge sack. Got to find a way to get seven. Let's see what we do. Do I go back shoulder? Oh, uh, we go tight end streak right here. Tight end streak. Oh, yeah, so we're just hoping to catch him in a one-on-one -on -one situation, possible ag glitch. And instead, we actually just cook him over top. And it's an easy touchdown for us. We end up having to go for two here. I paused the game. I got scared, actually. Well, not scared. I, I don't have a two. I, I, at this point, I've only been in U-Trips for like a week. Uh, so I didn't have a two-point play. And I've, I've struggled in the red zone um, a lot. So we really just end up saying, hey, we're in eye tight. We have a prayer right here. We're going to highball it. See if we catch it. We got it. Got Super lucky. Not going to pretend it's not. Um, we're not even lucky. Super bad for the game. That's actually a kind of a consistent throw. It's just really bad for the game. Uh, one on one, yeah. Carmichael six eight. You just can't have one on one. But we have a defensive stand here, or we need to put up a defensive stand. Four twenty, blaze it left on the clock. Bam, bam, cam. We audible up in the nickel over. We're not allowed to have a two from this. But right here, we're sending the dogs at him. Right, we're sending six people. User in the gap. He's going for the quick throw flat. He gets it. Carmichael, great tackle from Champ Bailey. That easily could have been a stiff arm and gotten way more rack out of it, but he doesn't. A lot of pressure on right here from both of us. I know. I'm happy, though. Worst case scenario, I don't imagine he goes for two if he scores. So, uh, you know, I, I probably have a money drive 
is what I'm thinking. And I'm moving the ball pretty well, in my opinion. Now, you might be wondering, you see that uh, sometimes against Punch, I'll put this guy in an outside third. And the reason is, is that if this guy's on a C route, the outside third's going to do a way better job against it than man coverage would. And as soon as he audibles into this, you're going to see this guy get manned up again. Right, we're going to take away, we're gonna take away that blue. Sending pressure. Pressure comes off the edge. Not great, but he does have to throw it away because he gets a little spooked by the pressure. Again, sending a blitz like that can do wonders for you if you can actually get hold. If you can hold the coverage for you know your one, two, three count, and then able to get that pressure in just to spook him a little bit. And you see, it had I only sent pressure every single play, I think I would have done way worse on defense than what I'm doing right now, where I'm able to do a pretty good mixture of the two. Uh, end up having to use her this halfback throws this throws underneath good good rack sits down at the 48 yard line my side of the field needs 48 yards now to score a tutty to tie the game Carmichael six for 85 those are pretty good balanced receptions from Carmichael uh it's a tough spot press man across the board right here uh, going with the outside third audibles to tight again I've never seen Kiv audible to tight as much as he does right here end up having to take away the halfback ourselves so we do we get lucky right here with the inaccurate throw over the middle of the field. They actually bumped, the receivers bumped into each other. Uh, he ran double drags and sometimes they'll just bump into each other. So that's just what happened right there. Definitely a fortunate uh, event for me. Would have definitely gotten some good yards out of that if uh, for Kiv. What do we do here? Second to 10, 48, 313 left. Going all, uh, all the way up to nickel over. And do we just go the double Mabel? Yeah, we probably just go double Mabel right here. Now it audibles to tight. What does he do? What is he cooking? I'm assuming he's going either deep corner route right here, or this guy's on a crosser and I have to user him, and this guy's on an in, right? Let's see if I'm right. Because he had run this a similar play earlier, and he goes, actually, none of the above. And just, yeah, I thought, I remember this play now. I thought this play sucked. I feel like... This is just an example of what switching up your defense could do for you. Um, and, and not even switching up your defense, but kind of predicting what they're doing. Um, I, I figured he'd attack the middle of the field on me, which he does with this post and this hitch. And so if you look pre-snap, um, I had this, I had my slot corner, instead of usually being in a curl flat, put him in a vert hook to take away this hitch. He could have forced a hitch still, but it would have been for minimal yards. And then we just used it in the middle of the field. Still think he could have called a better play. Um, but good defense, honestly, good defense by me, kind of predicting what he was going to go to to attack me. And we were right. That is like one thing on defense, along with kind of switching it up and being a little unpredictable, you do need to be predictive. Um, and that's a really good example by me uh, of, of being predictive and, and just being right. Sometimes you're wrong. Uh, but right there, we were right and get him onto a third and 12, which is a huge, with a huge opportunity gun. Uh, we're in double a gap. We back off both our corners. We're, this is the first time we've done this from double a gap. And I like this a lot where we back off these corners in clouds um, to play 25 yards deep. And then we have this this interior guy manned up in case they go for a seam streak. This interior in case he has a streak on the field, although there is some openings here. And the defense works out okay for us. Uh, he might have had a touchdown, but the pressure got him so fast he wasn't able to make the read. Honestly, the defense worked out as well as I could have wanted. It's just we didn't make the tackle, which that happens. Uh, this game, there's a lot of broken tackles in this game. Uh, also, he didn't get under pressure. Kind of that that defense kind of banks on getting you know someone free and under pressure. Both these my ends are you know two under pressure dudes. One more play before the end of the two minute warning or before the two minute warning, and I believe it's just gonna be a halfback base call. Which I I, I don't know. I thought all the runs he called were really bad. Uh, he has four rushes for one yard. I thought he'd have. I, I just thought that run sucked. Um, really, every run I felt like he called was really bad. Second and nine, up seven from the thirty three. Again, I'm still in a cool spot. Worst case scenario, I have some sort of money drive. We're going flats at 30, hook curls at 15, curl flats at zero. Let's see, do I audible into nickel over Tampa two? We do. Loving this defense a lot right now. We're gonna back off that side, going double Mabel on both sides. Audibles to gun tight. Do I end up putting a hook curl on the field? Uh, we do not, so we have the middle of the field ourselves. You see, he goes with bench. Again, tight is known for attacking the sidelines, so he attacks the sidelines. We have. You know, he has out route, I have a flat. Out route, flat. Corner route, deep flat. Corner route, deep flat. Now, middle field's mine. He has a halfback streak. He ran that earlier. We're able to get a lurk. Just an awesome, an awesome lurk by me. A forced throw by him. I think that's a bad play call, honestly, though. 
he could have scrambled right here, but he went for he went for the touchdown. He also this corner route actually got above this flat sort of, so it could have been this could have been a touchdown as well. Um, he just forces this throw and would able to get a lurk. <laughs> Nothing else to say about it, dude. This is a freaking great lurk. First to ten, got to get a couple first downs. It's still a ball game, right? Got to get a couple first downs. He ends up leaving. I mean, the same ball that we were able to hit constantly this game. The same exact ball, dude. I'm surprised this was so open. Watch what happens here. This motion over. I know this when that when I motion this guy over. If he's in, uh, I believe it's what's the play? If he's in uh, out of three three five wide, if he's in covers Mike Blitz zero, this motion right here from the outside brings the safety down. The safety's in a half, but because he took a step down, we're able to get this free form lob to the outside of him. Carmichael's gonna catch it pretty much every time. He's just so big and so everything. We're about five six seven yards away from field goal range here he has two timeouts a first down wins this game uh we end up a couple runs gets us to a third and nine no reason to really show those he's out of timeouts and i'm saying okay i'm going to get a first down i like running the ball here is kind of begging to get into field goal range i'm like i'm going to pass the ball i am going to get a first down. i've played pretty good on offense all day i'm gonna have an opportunity here and I end up going to why I believe is the best shit in the game, which is the ag glitch, and looking for an ag glitch opportunity. Double streaks right here, looking for a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Dickerson, 6'3", Casper, 6'4". Get a one-on-one, -on -one, launch it, catch it, knocked out. Fourth and nine now, boys. Fourth and nine for the game. I can't kick from here. Not going to punt, just because, I mean... There's an argument I'm sure for punting, but I'm playing one of the best offensive players, if not the best offensive player of all time. I'm not giving the ball back. If I, you know, I'm not, I have to get a stop regardless. If I get this or if I, if I don't get this or if I punt, I have to get a stop both ways. So, go back to a, a old reliable. Remember this play from earlier? Scat. Uh, we have a corner out right here, which had been winning. We have a one-on-one -on -one right here. The street, if he shades underneath, the streak's going to be open for a touchdown. This slant is going to do okay. It has the opportunity to win. And then a motion streak all the way across the field. Remember, we ran this earlier. Get a one-on-one. -on -one, ag him. GG's. If you guys remember earlier in this game, we ran the same route combo on like a second down or something on this side of the field, uh, a little bit around like the 20. One-on-one -on -one opportunity. His user's really doing nothing. I don't know why his user did this. Um, and we get the ag. What's interesting here is that we actually, this defense was kind of, like we have a one-on-one -on -one shot right here. This is another ag opportunity that I honestly could catch pretty easily. And then this corner route also is getting leverage right here to get past it outside. A I, I think it's a really good play call. I think this play is really, really good for the style of defense he was running. And GG's. That's how he beat Young Kid, boys. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. You enjoyed it? Check out this video right here. You're going to love it.